Here's an overview of the Escort Turbo project. I wanted to keep it as factory looking as possible, so a lot of these pieces are Mazda OEM parts. I was able to keep the air conditioning system as well because it's hot in Georgia most days and I considered that a necessity. I reused the factory heat shields and repainted them, but I did have to get a slimline electric fan from Mishimoto. It was the lowest amperage, biggest diameter one I could find that would fit on the radiator. Here is the factory intake and charge piping. Above that where the red vacuum lines come in are for the wastegate actuator and you can also see the oil and coolant lines that go to the turbo. If we squeeze down here we can get a better look at that charge piping. It's a cast aluminum piece and has to make a tight crook to come up and over that lower support bar and you can see it is attached to the front engine mount. Also that silicone hose over there I had to make to go from the charge piping to the bottom of the intercooler. And that top strap is a little loose. I'll have to tighten it up later. You can also get a quick view at the coolant lines and the blow-off valve. The blow-off valve piping has to go back into the intake system instead of venting to atmosphere because this is a pull-through mass airflow instead of a blow-through. I had to make this upper part here to go from the top of the intercooler to the throttle body. This large hose on top goes to the idle air control valve. Uh, older Mazda engines use this. Directly below that is where the blow-off valve is mounted. I was able to reuse the Mazda GTX intake and the GTX mass airflow sensor, which is a bigger diameter than the Escort, but thankfully the wiring is plug and play. Here you can see the coolant lines better, and again there is the blow-off valve piping. I decided to go with an air-to-water intercooler instead of an air-to-air -air because to mount an air-to-air -air intercooler would mean removing the factory escort fog lamps, and I really wanted to keep those. In front is the radiator for the intercooler system. Thankfully it fits right between the power steering cooler and the AC condenser. I used 3 quarter inch hoses because I did not want to have to have a reservoir for the intercooler system but I may add a small one at a future date just so I have a way to top off the system. The hoses snake down under here directly under where the radiator mounts and now you can get a better view of that bottom silicone pipe and how the air to water intercooler is mounted to the radiator using the bolt holes where the factory fan was mounted. That electric water pump is off of a GT500 and it is for their supercharger cooler. It uses an air to water intercooler as well. The wiring for all this goes through this auxiliary block over here in the fender. When you turn, to the, key, turn the key to the on position it energizes the block and pulls directly from the battery. I tried to keep the factory wiring in place as much as I could and just ran the wires for the new stuff alongside it to keep it out of the way and to preserve that factory look as much as I could. The wiring for the sensors runs up through here underneath the coil past the battery between the shock tower and down through this mess of factory wiring. It pops out in the fender well here, and I have removed the fender liner so we can get a better look at it. It goes through this rubber grommet into the firewall and in the fa uh, driver floorboard along with the rest of the factory wiring. Some of the sensors we had to add was a knock sensor and knock controller, which is right here on the firewall. The sensor is on the block itself. And a four-wire throttle position sensor. Uh, you could use the Escort three-wire, but the four-wire from the Mazda GTX will give you a better accuracy. Over here is the wastegate vacuum valve. I was able to reuse the wiring for the variable intake runners that came on the Escort GT since this intake doesn't have those. Inside the wiring comes through the firewall here with all the other factory wiring and then goes up and over the speedometer cable that you can see right there. 
I've taken the trim panel off so that you can see the Mazda GTX computer. I used this instead of a Mega Squirt because I wanted a simple factory like install and I'm not looking to do anything very extreme with this turbo setup. In front is where the boost gauge is mounted and a spare spot for an O2 meter.